Hello everybody, welcome back to the Tone Aries podcast. Before we get into it there, we just want to remind people that you know, we're supported through Danny Donovan at quickminutes.com. Mm. Yeah, Danny's a, a very good friend of both myself and James. He comes from the north side as well and he grew up locally and, <clears throat> you know, he's a, been a massive supporter of the podcast and both myself and James since we actually began and, you know, he's uh, he has his own company called Quick Minutes now and and quickminutes.com is a meeting management application for um, semi-formal and formal meetings. And look, if you want to know more about that, quickminutes.com and supporting Danny, supporting us. Um, so if you're interested in that, check him out and enjoy the rest of the podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Two Norries podcast. I am your host, James Ennard, joined by my good friend, Timmy Long. Hi, everyone. Ron is on the deck. Say hi, Ron. Hi, Ron. We've got three ladies in the audience, Yvonne, Eileen, and Aoife. I got that right, didn't I? Brilliant, brilliant. And we've a local man in the in the at the table with us today. Mark Payton from Grand Churchfield, Grand Grand Road. Column Kill Road, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Ori Road. Brilliant. Ori Road, yeah. Pat Falvey is originally from Ori Road. He is. He's a podcast alumni. So um great to have you here. You're only back from the UK. Uh, that's where you're based at the moment. And you're fifty today, Mark. Huge yeah. congratulations and happy birthday to you, birthday, boy. Boy. You know, yeah. look, 50. Thanks. Oh, you've been Thanks a bit of a stud, a bit of a stud <laughs> as well, as if you're listening <laughs> to this. 50, boy, you look, you look very, very glowy. Do I? Yeah. Thanks, Timmy. Uh, uh, I'll take that. That's Timmy. the only word that came to my mind, so <laughs> glowy was, I think, yeah. if it's... Rowan, yeah. post no Jordan the week, right? Picture of Timmy smiling <laughs> and, 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 in quotations. You look very glowy. <laughs> <laughs> and we patent that. <laughs> yeah, uh, T-shirt. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, and I'm know. smiling into the camera here on, all, on my bad side because I, I lost my teeth last week. We won't get into that story. My wife is probably listening along and she's saying, oh, Jesus, that man will say anything on camera, won't he? But I actually have a false tooth on the right side of my mouth. And I took him out the other day to do something. I can't remember where I put him. I can't find him. <laughs> and we're doing a, a documentary with, uh, with Nationwide tomorrow. And I've no teeth on the right side of my mouth. And my wife will probably absolutely kill me. <laughs> probably in the it. condom pocket of the jeans <laughs> now in the washing machine. Now, um. <laughs> or else it's somewhere on here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but look, we get away from Timmy's teeth yeah. and the glory <laughs> yeah. and stuff. But uh, we go way back, Mark. For the people that don't know you, do you want to tell us a little bit about who you were and where you're from, what it was like growing up? Yeah, um, Mark Payton. Um, they say I grew up in on Ory Road in in uh, Gronabraha, um, number fifty two, and um, you know I've, I've been talking to people like you know, you know, just reflecting on what it was like knowing that the, the podcast was coming up, like you know, and the, and and the thing about it is, my upbringing was, I'd say, privileged actually, you know. Yeah. Um, I was the youngest of fifteen children. Go away with that. Absolutely, yeah. Fifteen children. I, 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 um, seven brothers, seven sisters. Fuck. Yeah. There was eight boys, seven girls in the family. Go away. Yeah. Not, family, not right? all at once. We yeah. didn't. We, you know, Bovinari Road Council yeah. House. You know, big ages. Yeah. Big, big, age, big age gap. Between gap. You and the oldest. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so there was there was always only I think I think the most, the most that were ever in the house was I think eight. And I think by the time I came along, it was it was sort of six. Yeah. So it was never, for, mm. I never experienced more than six, like in the house, you know. Mm. But it was always a house that was, as you can imagine, full of life, you know. Mm. People <laughs> coming and go. Busy house. <laughs> you know, yeah, in my case, yeah, <laughs> nieces and nephews, grandkids, yeah, my parents' grandkids, you know. Yeah. Um, Would you have uh, nephews and nieces around your own age? Believe it or not, I have a nephew that's older than me. Go away. Yeah. Yeah, because it's similar to my family, my mum's side, there's 11 of them. Nine girls, that's and two right. boys. Yeah. But my uncle Alan is younger than my brother Keith. Right, so, uh, that's right. But yeah. that's the way I was back it was, in the day, wasn't right. it? Exactly. Big families buy fire out the kids. That's right. Exactly <laughs> that. Um, good old Catholic families, no contraception <laughs> and all that, you know. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, growing up, growing up in that environment, like you know, was them. Um, as I say, like I, I, I think it was privileged in a lot of ways because, um, you know, being the youngest, I would have been, I would have been, I'd say, even probably. Over sheltered, mm. yeah. In a, in a lot of ways, you know. Would you have been would you have been dotted upon by the elders? Would you be the, the, the typical baby of the well, family? Typical like? baby, of the family. Even you know, even even like you know, spoiled so bad. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. You know, particularly by my sisters, you know. Mm. Yeah. And and um, you know, the brothers were workers, like and things like that, like and. Uh, but um, where'd you go to school? I went to school in Strawberry Hill. 
and then Terence Max Sweeney after that. Yeah, yeah. but um, good school, Terence Max Sweeney. Yeah, great school, but um, and Strawberry Hill. Absolutely, they do great things in both of them schools, don't they? Yeah, just? they don't know. Yeah, oh, yeah, they do. I'd say. Yeah, I mean, even even when I was going, like uh, Terence Max Sweeney, like was 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 forward thinking then, like even mm-hmm. you know, I think it was there was a lot of competition between it and the man, like yeah, and um, I mean, you know, when I look back. You know, school was never high on my agenda at all. Like you know, um, even though, as I said, you know, growing up, growing up in a family like that was great in in the sense. I mean, you know, we never had more than anybody, nor, nor less than anybody. If you know yeah, what I mean, it was just typical working class. Like. Exactly, yeah. You know, um, and, and uh, but like, you know, as I say, it was it was it was great. It was my brothers and sisters were fantastic to me, like you know, and things like that. But you know. When when you go on later on, and you know when we get into the, the conversation, you know as the conversation progresses here, I know we'll know like that, or we can see that, you know, little things even at that stage started to sort of make me a bit restless, even as a young fella, like you know, mm. and, and 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 you know, and I would have learned like you know doing the work on myself, self reflection and education, and and, and yeah. you know, um, that you know, I would have started like identity issues would have started to emerge like within within my psyche like you know mm-hmm. because i would have had like two brothers telling me do this two brothers telling me do that another guy telling me do this and i wanted to be like him and i wanted to be like him and i wanted to be like him you know mm-hmm. and mark was getting lost you know yeah and and how that manifested like was i started to become restless you know so I mean, I did, you know, normal things as a kid growing up, as I said, you know, I I, I played sports and, and things like that. Like, but, you know, as I said, on, on the whole self-reflection piece, like years later, you know, and, and obviously, f- you know, with the help of some some great people as well, like, you know, along the way, um, you, c- you know, I could really identify that Mark got lost mm. somewhere in all of that. And, and and um how did we get lost how, how did we get lost what what was starting to happen we getting into trouble or we using drugs and drinking as a early age yeah yeah um well how it manifested to me like was i started i found it hard to settle in anything or doing anything mm. you know school was 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 the first on the hit list lost all interest in school you know, um, it was just the restlessness yeah. that started to emerge, you know, and mm. um, homework, you know, like when I was younger, I was very good, you know, and I had the ability. But as I, you know, going into secondary school. And then experimenting with everything else, yeah, with with the drugs like and uh, things like that. And, and, you know, that became more attractive then than than the school mm. and, and, and lessons and homework and things like that. And then started to get into trouble at school. And just in the end, I just, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't present in any form and I just didn't apply myself at all, you know? Mm. And then I became destructive, constantly messing, mm. you know, this sort of thing. Um, I mean, I sat, I sat in intersort because, you know, because I was, only because I, I was in the year for the intersort, mm. you know, and I failed miserably, like, you know. Yeah. And then soon after, like, you know, my poor father, like, God rest him, like, he was asked, like, you just take him out of school, like, you know, because he's just, he's just causing mayhem, like, in the place, you know. Mm. And and that's the way it was, you know, and, um, and, and, and that continued, that just continued then, you know, and, um, did you no. finish school after the junior sort, the intersort? I did, yeah, I did. I did, did you go working? I, I tell you what happened. I was lucky enough that um, one of the brothers had a, had a friend that uh, he was a plastering contractor. And uh, the Kavanaghs, they are from the north side of plasterers. Oh, well, yeah. 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 Uh, another man, actually, who was very good to me as a young as a young fella, was an old neighbour of yours, mm-hmm. uh, Nicky Kavanagh. I know Nicky, yeah. And, uh, yeah. and, and Nicky kind of took me under his wing. Yeah. And um, so I was, I, I think I served a couple of years with the Kavanaghs as an apprentice. And, um, but what happened, I suppose, between that, um, 
and 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 you know, I suppose I was I was just starting to to get a bit of stability, really, like you know, where I was interested in something that I was doing, and and of course, I had a little bit of independence, and yeah. and that was helping with the identity stuff, you know, because I was getting a few bob, mm. do you know what I mean, and 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 I wasn't I wasn't asking everybody at home. Yeah. Do you know, for, it was a few bob for this yeah, and a few bob for that. Independence. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so 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 that was helping in that sense. But like, you know, just to go back to the independent, you know, the identity thing, because for a second, because it, it, it really paints a picture like in terms of, you know, how, how, how things really collapsed was the only st- true stability I had in the, in the home, which never changed, was in the person of my mother. Mm. you know and 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 she was the one anchor like that wasn't moving and and who I completely trusted and uh, you know I just you know that that was the rock like that I that I you know mm. I continue was I was able to break myself against mm. all the time yeah you know and and it was it, she was unwavering like you know mm. in her love for me and mm. in, you know and things like that like you know and she passed away suddenly, just as I started um, the the uh, the apprenticeship. What age were Mark? Sixteen. Sorry to hear that, boy. Yeah, I I was I just turned sixteen, and that all oh, bets were off after that. Like mm. that that was it. Like you know, I I, I crumbled. You lost your structure, like you I, crum- your- I crumbled yeah. as a as a as a person, like you know, and mm. um, that weren't you know. consistent adults. That you completely trusted, it's gone. You're only a young That's man right. finding your way in the world. That's right. Oh. All of that. All of that. Um, all these things that we would consider like, um, you know, determinants of addiction and negative life outcomes are happening at this time. You know what we would call adverse childhood experience and traumas and all these things. You That's know? right. Isn't it great when we get education, we get to put language on our experiences and begin to interpret you know, our experiences and understand them. But when you're living it. It's just devastation. That's right. And you're just reacting all the time, aren't you? Exactly that. Exactly that. And and that 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 rebellious restlessness just went out of control, really, in a, in, a, in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Even though, even though, like you know, I, I I got some great opportunities in life afterwards. That restlessness, you know, and and that sort of self destructive kind of way, um. It stays with you in different ways, doesn't it? It moves from one thing to another thing. That's right. To another thing. To another thing. That's right. Know? That's right. Exactly that to me. Like mm-hmm. you know, you know, I struggled like with relationships. Mm-hmm. I struggled with jobs, you know, and 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 then I I would have sort of, you know, things that I would have been once interested in, they went then as well, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So it was like a, a, a constant spiral, like of, um, I suppose. Trying to find myself, yeah. really, yeah. you know, and 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 I used to share, um, I used to share like in 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 you know later on like when I, when I got into recovery like, I ended up traveling wanting to, I I I go I was in I was in Jersey Island, um soon after my mother passed away and um working as a as a plastering improver like I was just seventeen, and and I was there and, um. You know, and that was great for a while. And then I had to move somewhere else. Do you know? I had a brother in America. I went to visit him and I stayed there. That wasn't good enough. I had to go somewhere else. The demographic, I, they call it. Don't they? The geographics. <laughs> this geographic. And as I, as I, you know, as, as I discovered later on, you know, the, the first person like that I met when I got off the plane each time was myself. Mm-hmm. The head follows like, you know, and I didn't know who I was. You know, and I was yeah. constantly running from myself, not knowing that, you know, mm. you know, and you mentioned the education, James, you know, I mean, later on when I got the opportunity to go back to, to education, you know, and, and, and uh, as I said, with the help of some great people, like who you've had on this podcast, actually, yeah. you know, um, helped me through a lot of stuff and, and, and to get back to, to where I am in a lot of ways, but, um, you know, the education piece was, was, you know, really pivotal to to understanding and creating an awareness um, for, and as you mentioned earlier, for how that knowledge of of that 
working model that you'd ha- that you would know mm. as a person mm. shifts mm. you know and 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 when that when that happens then it affects your perception mm. on life you know and how you see things and how you see people you know and 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 how that manifested for me was i i developed a, a sort of a, a mindset that if you if I thought you liked me or if I thought you loved me, if you were a, if you were a girl, like, for example, you were gone. Mm. You were gone then, like, you were, you know, you, you were pushed to the side and you were kept at arm's length. That, that's how it manifested. That's, that's how I started dealt Cause, with it. Because you, you know mm. what it's like to get close to somebody and to be heartbroken. That's right. So to avoid that ever happening again, if you ever felt you're getting close to somebody, you push them away. 100%. The bags are always at the door, just ready for you to, the minute it gets serious and there's a responsibility comes a little bit, the bags are just by the door, pick them up when you're gone. I can completely relate to that. I love that analogy, Tim, yeah. you know, yeah. um, because, you know, um, it, that's so true. And, and that was the case. Yeah. You know, it was always, you know, <clears throat> I went into treatment like at one point, for six months, you know, in a residential um, centre up the country. And there was a counsellor there who later became my supervisor when I trained as a counsellor myself. And he, and he used to say to me all the time, you know, take your foot in from the door. Mm. <laughs> and I never, of course, my head like was so chaotic. Yeah. I had no clue what he was saying, you know. Yeah. But that's so true. Yeah. I had one foot in the door. All the time, you know, ready to go, ready to go. The identity, you know, it's this, it's just, it, it, it runs with the identity, not sure, not sure who you are. The one foot in, the one foot out, That's you right. know, one identity is here, one is there. It's just, it's, it, and you said it yourself, you were never settled. That's right. And the settlement is an, is, is an internal thing, and you, and I'm sure you know that because I can see how calm you are now and relaxed. and mm. And just, you seem like you're really centred. No, but I can completely relate to that because it's like, it's like a bunch of wild Mustangs running across wasteland, not knowing where they're going, but they're constantly going. That's right. And they're just all over the shop. Timmy's a great man for the analogies today. Fantastic. Fucking wild I love Mustangs. Them. I love them. I love them. <laughs> but you know, when you, were, when you were talking there and the wild Mustangs and the unease, you know what it reminded me of? Do you know when I first started linking them with the Cockerines, Vicky used to come up to the prison when I was young for I know. And she used to say to me, uh, like, I was fed up with drugs from an early age. I wanted a different life, but I never felt like I could actually, didn't have the belief that I could actually do it. But she used to say to me, what does the drugs do for you? What do they do for you? Mm. I didn't want, I could give up the heroin, the alcohol, but the thought of giving up the tablets, Mm. I thought Mm. I could never do it. Mm. She says, what does it do for you? And all I could say was, it just makes everything calm. Mm. It just makes everything mm. calm. <laughs> but when you're talking about that unease, that, to me talking about the wild must, that, it's that, isn't it? But when exactly. you take the, the value of Mozanax or that's right. Purple House, it's just everything is just manageable, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. And what that's all we want is mm. just, just take away that madness inside that's us, right. you know, and that kind of discontentment. Do you know what I mean? And, w- and, and all we're looking for then is and something to take that away and when you don't have the other coping skills you use what's available to you mm. and the way we always say here mm. if we didn't have the drugs at the time probably would have taken my life mm. because I tried that too mm. Mm. do you know what I mean so mm. at least we had something Yeah. but then after a while that's that springs and so on consequences how, how bad did it get for you before you started to look at maybe moving away from that type of a life well I mean it you know, I suppose the, the, the uh, criminality was never really, um, <clears throat> you know, at, it was never really an issue for me. Um, you know, as I said, I held down jobs, even though I was job hopping all the time, yeah. you know. Um, but I remember I, I, I returned to Cork um, after being away, like traveling, traveling, running away from myself for a few years. You know, and I came back to Cork eventually, and um, the you know there was a, there was a big drug scene had yeah. emerged in Cork. Yeah, you know, and this, what year are we talking? This, this is around ninety five, early ninety six. That way, yeah, yeah, ecstasy. Yeah. Yes, that was a wild, wild time. Yes, yeah. yes, and 
mates that I had known from years ago, you know, they were fairly high up, like, in, 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 in the drugs trade, you know? And, uh, of course, initially, it was just a social thing for me. Mm. Meet up with the lads. I hadn't seen them for years. How are you getting on? Where are you? This, that, the whole lot, you know? And it was all party central, yeah. mm. you know? And... Um, and I think that's that's that was the start of the end, really for me. Like you know, because um, um, it was it was easy for me. I suppose I was working when I came back, but at that stage, then I couldn't get up without taking something. I couldn't go to bed without taking something. Mm. And thinking back, there were times of the day where I had to take something too yeah. just to keep me going like mm. you know let it be up or down mm. you know and, and that didn't last Yeah. and in the end I wasn't able to work I just wasn't able you know yeah. I couldn't hold on a job at all mm. like you know and of course on the surface you know I, I suppose for anybody because you know I've had family members like and, you know they would say you know things like but sure you, you don't have addiction like right? mm. You, mm. you know what I mean? Like you, you go out, like and you know, and things like this. Like you know, you you go out and you enjoy yourself, and yeah. you know, thing, things like that on the surface, you know. Yeah. And sure, they're all doing that, like, and do you know what I mean? Mm. And this sort of thing, you know. But um, but you know, I mean, the 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 I suppose the symptoms were were, were manifesting, like mm. you know, the 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 unmanageability. In my life, you know, couldn't manage anything, mm. you know. Um, it's an attractive lifestyle as well. Well, isn't it? Well, yeah. the thing is, you know, the lads that I knew and it, and in the positions they were in, like, I mean, I was looking on, I didn't have a penny in my pocket. Mm. And the lads were rolling it. Like, yeah, did yeah. you fall into the dealing? I did, yeah. But, you know, Takes a bit of time though to kind of yeah fall into that. It, yeah, it, it, mm. you, you're you're forcibly buying drugs and then That's, you can't afford mm. the habit, this this the strength of the habit you have anymore. And the only way to feed the habit then is actually getting involved in it yourself, yeah. isn't it? And um, I suppose when you get involved in it then yourself, like you're just taking never ends quantities well. of drugs. It never ends well, yeah. no matter who you are. And you look at, like, um, no matter what kind of a drug dealer you are, and we look at the Kinnahins mm -hmm. at the moment, mm -hmm. they were, it was always going to end like this. That's right. It always ends in prison or death. Yeah. Even for the most powerful drug dealers, you know. That's right. So, and how did it end for you? I want to give you plenty of time for your recovery side, of it, which is important to you. That's right. So, it, like, the ecstasy, you lost the job, you're not able to hold on the job, start the deal, and did you get caught? I did, yeah. You know, within 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 a short space of time too. Mm. Actually, you know, I was I was only sort of like, I was only up and going about I think about a year and a half mm. or so. You know, even though I was known to the guards because I'd been hanging around the scene. Yeah, do you know what I mean? I would have been known as as mm. somebody like if you would have asked any guard around, like they would have told you, oh, that man has a serious problem. Like you know, yeah. you know, and, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But it was short lived. You know, about a year and a half, I'd say, is all, is all I got out of it. Do you know? And um, from a monetary point of view, I got nothing. Uh, thank, do you know? Thank God. Yep. Year and a, you know, Absolutely. When you, when you look back at the, the amount of trauma that comes. That's right. With somebody in addiction. That's right. You know, um, the faster it kind of happens and, and you get out of it, mm. the better. Like, if something bad might have happened, you might have got caught. You might have had an, an, an overdose, you know, or whatever, but something happens and you said, I can't, this is not the life of me anymore. Mm. But you you think your world is ending at the time. Yeah. But actually, when you go on in your life and you look back, mm. it's the actual godsend in your life that has mm. stopped you in your tracks. You know, even if you got 10 years out of it mm. and you made a rake of money, mm. what quality of life do you actually have? The paranoia. Do you know what I mean? Always looking over your shoulder, not being able to trust nobody. Mm. Like that's not worth it. The money at all, like it's 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 unbelievable, actually. You know, mm. because like you know, they, I mean, it's 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 just like the chaos 
you know and I mean if I thought it was bad beforehand I, I mean I was I was definitely a basket case now like you know because as you said I had to look over my shoulder mm. I had to deal with potential whatever was coming around the corner you know um, and things like that you know so so you know I was and, and you know you're right Tim you know I agree with you like I thank God actually you know because um, even though <clears throat> I got caught I received a hefty prison sentence mm. you know um, I was sentenced to 12 years Go away, you know for a possession charge uh, fucking hell and uh I was sentenced to 12 years and um, I was um, I was given the opportunity to I was given bail for the op- for the opportunity to go to treatment mm. and of course I was a very clever fella thinking this is this is my this is my way out yeah right not believing for a second that I had an issue yeah with with, with drugs or alcohol mm. And of course, when I was accepted into the treatment centre, that's that was the beginning of life for me. Mm. That was the start of yeah. my my. That was the start of my recovery. It was the start of life as I know it now, mm. you know. And um, I mean, you went to treatment before prison. So I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Same. And and you you got the recovery process then. That's right. Okay. What treatment did you do? That's right. I did. Um, it was a, it was a sort of um, a branch off a of coal mine lodge at the time, okay. up in um, Sale No, a coal mine. I was due to go to coal mine lodge. They were full. They couldn't take me, and there was another crowd. As I say, they were they were. It was a branch off coal mine lodge, a place called Sale No, up in Port Arlington. Oh, all right, yeah. And um, residential centre. Yeah. And uh, I ended up going in there for six months. And the hard, the hardest thing I ever did. It's deadly, isn't it? Mm the hardest thing I ever did mm. you know because um, you know I mean the denial like was very strong on me you know and my agenda was wrong yeah you know mm. my agenda was I'm in here to get off this sentence like <laughs> do you know what I mean that's how that's, that's yeah. how it works for every single fella like yeah. you know I think that the old treatment centre is going to get them off prison you know it doesn't work like that but sometimes you get it along the way yeah. And 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 what happened was, for the first time since I was a young boy, I gained an awareness mm-hmm. of, really of yeah. what was going on. And for me, awareness is the key. Mm-hmm. I mean, as we all know, addiction is a very complex issue. Yeah, you know, and and it's not easily solved. Mm-hmm. But if you're to have any chance or hope, you have to gain an awareness of who you are why you're doing what you're doing you know and, and behaviours that you have to change exactly you know and and so 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 that's what happened yeah. and even though you know the the what happened was when I came when I came down to court I mean I got a bit of a fright like when I got 12 years mm. especially after doing the treatment yeah. do you know and so um, you didn't get anything suspended or he didn't reduce it or anything like that no no oh, fucking hell nothing no 12 years, that was that it. That was harsh, wasn't it? It was, it was at the time. Have you ever been to prison before that? No, no, never. Fucking hell, Mark. No, never. Never in trouble before that. Never in trouble on paper. I yeah, mean, yeah, I had no, I had no previous, previous yeah, exactly. I had no previous convictions. Did and you appeal it or anything? I did. And what happened on the appeal, um, I'm, I'm trying to get it right. I was given leave to apply for a review after six years. Mm. Yeah. So, that's what I received. Mm. They gave me a, a leave to apply after six years. After six years for for a, a court review. That was um, my dad. He got seven years in ninety eight, but he he did his review after four. Right. They don't do the reviews anymore. Mm. Like okay. Don't, That's what okay. I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, they don't do, but they were yeah. doing for drug of for drug no, sentences back there's then. There's a new okay. thing in now, though. It's um, it's what is it? Um, some IPS scheme there where if a prisoner is good mm. and he's behaving well and he's doing what he's he's getting into education and he's rehabilitating he'll be put into an open prison mm. and he will get half his sentence okay. instead of doing three quarters he'll do half so okay. if you're doing seven you'll do the three and a half okay instead of five okay you, you, you apply for half remission yeah, if you're playing yeah, by a new system you, like you have to be on an enhanced regime and okay 
then you want it's but but it doesn't end at that then mm. you're put back out into the open you're through community service every day okay you know if you haven't got a job right you have to be interacting with probation services and it's thorough yes and have to be signing on once a week in, inside the prison yeah. sure sure so, you know this podcast is shown in a lot of the prisons in ireland yeah you know so for the lads that are watching what what prisons did you go to where did you settle what was it like for you yeah yeah no and and, and you know what when when i mean i would know that you know and 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 then when this opportunity came I don't even know if I thank you, but anyway, thanks. Don't worry, you know, no, because no, thank you. simply thank you. because, like, that's that's such an important part of um, what I'm about these days. You know, yeah. um, my heart is for helping people. You know, yeah. um, and um, you know, you know, I'm a Christian now, and yeah. you know, to, you know, to, to I suppose to follow the example of the person of Jesus Christ, like you know, who came to say to save and to serve the lost. You know, which I was like, you know, and uh, so I really, well, man. so I really get that, you know. But to answer your question, James, um, I was sentenced to Cork Prison. Um, I was soon transferred after that to Wheatfield in Dublin. Yeah. And I served the remainder of my sentence in Wheatfield. Um, I was given, um, they let me go into uh, the training unit at Mount Joy yeah. uh, for the last few months of the sentence. And uh, I mean, you know, it, I mean, it's a, it's a different culture, you know, prison, you know, you have to, for, for someone like me who had never been there, mm. yeah. you know, I, re I remember the chief of staff, like, you know, chief of the guards, like one day saying to me, keep your head down, you know, later, you know, and I had to, to that didn't resonate with me. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You had to learn to keep your head down. Yeah. And at you the know? same time as keeping your head down you have to learn to deal with what's going on internally for you because absolutely you're you're you're, you're hyper vigilant you're completely you're watching everything that's going on around you because you could potentially be attacked mm. at any moment that's right you know if you have any conflict on the outside and, and that's right like if you're somebody that had a lot yeah. of conflict with different people on the outside you're yeah. going in there yeah trying to keep your head down but it's not as easy as that yeah. Because if you have somebody that's looking to fucking harm you, that's right. you cannot keep your head down. You have to protect yourself. And, that's right. And it's it, it's 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 easier said than actually done. Do you know what? I found very difficult about residential treatment. Do you know when you come from uh, the north side, which can be a tough area to grow up, you know, yeah. and the drug scene and streets and prison, you learn a set of behaviours that help you cope with that environment. Mm. And then in residential treatment, you have six months to unlearn that because it's <laughs> very... Right. But like, you did the six months residential, That's but right. now you're back into that negativity. But you see, you see, this is the thing, like, in, in that, like... I, 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 for the first time, you know, since I was a young boy, like as such, it was the first opportunity I had to be completely clean mm -hmm. and that was in prison. Yeah. So I had to learn to sort of cope without anything and cope with this environment, you know, mm -hmm. in, in my complete senses, like, you know, and, um, get to know yourself. No hiding oh, place. <laughs> no hiding place, you know, but, but, but I, I. I relapsed. Um, I relapsed. I was on a landing um, above in 10F in Wheatfield and the who's who of, of, of the Dublin sort of criminal fraternity and Limerick all on this. If you were serving more than 10 years, you, you had to be serving more than 10 to go on this landing. And of course, I'm in, I'm in the depth. I'm <laughs> deep inside. You know, what I, I'm in the depth of it, like above there, like you know what I mean. And party central again every Saturday night, like mm. yeah. you know, you'd 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 more you'd more of everything in there than what you had outside, like you know. Yeah. And um, but the thing about it is, and I heard this, and you might be familiar with this, that you know, a head full of awareness mm. and a belly full of substances, mm. not a good mix. Not a good mix. No. You know, and as well as that, because the clean time I had, and again, the fantastic family that I had, you know, you know, for the six years, believe it or not, like that I was in Dublin, like I never went to road a, a visit mm. on a weekly basis. That's brilliant, isn't it? You know, that that was that's the yeah. kind of family that I have, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. And um, and I was looking at them coming coming up, and and I was. I was going back into the old ways. I was going out like, and I was lying to them, you know. Yeah. Oh, sure, things are great. 
you know what I mean? I'd be going up to the school now, like, and, you know, this, that, like, and I was telling them lies, you know. And I had too much awareness at that point. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the, what happened to me then was I, I, um, I got an opportunity to do my junior sort, which I passed with honours. Fair play. My leaving sort, which I passed with honours. And I was, as a result of that then, the education, I did a, a, an entry sort of level course then to addiction studies. And then, of course, because I was able to, I had the space to apply myself. And, uh, you know, it, it changed my perception again. And, you know, it, it really helped me to become, you know, what I am today, really, exactly. you know. Yeah. And uh, soon after, I, I this, the, you see, the teachers then above in the school, like they, they tend to rally around people who are, you know, who are trying and uh, yeah. who want to get on and things. And they opened them. Um, they opened the drug free unit above there. And I remember there was a couple of teachers like, um, they were saying to me, look, Mark, you'll be ideal like for this, you know, and things like that. And, and I kind of befriended them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They were, they, they were, they were my own age, like, and they were, they were, they were sound like, you know, mm. and, uh, one of them, and I, and I know from listening to the podcast, Tim, that, that you're familiar with meditation yeah. and things yeah. like that. You know, and I, I, I did a couple of courses like on stress management and, and um, meditation, yeah. you know, and that would have been that would have been a bedrock for me throughout the rest of the sentence yeah. meditation. Um, and uh, of course, the, the, the study was was a mainstay then as well that that became part of, um, you know, filling my time like, you know, and um, so I suppose the long story short was I, I applied then and I and I I, I, I was um, I got onto the drug free unit uh, above there where you had it was you know very strict regime in terms of um, you had to uh, you had to submit at least three uh, urines a week that were that were clean you know yeah and um, and that's what I did. Do you think you'd be the man you are today if you didn't go to prison and get a break away from your environment that you were brought up around? You know, and having to be a certain way and being and just going to the pub and going to work. Yeah. But up there, like, it gives you a break away from all that. You can you got your education. Yeah. You started to do all these meditation courses, personal development. Mm. Would you have done I'm, any of that if yeah. you were an hourly road? Like, I, I, I mean, wouldn't have. <clears throat> at that stage, you never know, really. You know, yeah. well, I, 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 to be quite honest with you, lads, you know, I, I've, I've done a lot of the self-reflection mm. stuff, you know. Um, as well as the personal development on a, on a continuous basis, mm-hmm. really, you know, over, I suppose, nearly 15, almost 20 year period now, mm-hmm. you know, and um, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. I was just going to say it was a godsend in my life. It was the best thing yeah. that ever happened to me getting that sentence, mm. you know. I've often been a home, Mark, um, and I, I've, I've mentioned this before, I never in my whole lifetime felt so secured and behind a prison door and it gave me a great bit of peace in my life knowing that I had 18 hours a day to kind of get to know who I was whereas I wouldn't have a home because I had a young family but also uh, it just there has been times since I've been out of prison that I've actually uh, said you know what I wouldn't mind fucking be behind that door again Mm. but I just just to have a bit of that little bit of peace that I had back then, no right. responsibilities or anything like. But right. you can't hide there then either. No, you can't. No. Um, but it 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 gave me exactly what I needed in my life around that time. You know, it gave me an education like yourself, mm. meditation. Yeah. You know, I got therapy, mm. and it was my early introduction to who I was as well. Because I'd look in the mirror and I had no idea yeah. who I was. None. No. No. hated the person that looked back sure, sure. you know had no clue you know and um, it's like you're reborn you mentioned awareness the first glimpse of awareness you have that's your moment in life when you're born because you either shut off at a young age mm. because of a certain circumstance mm. I woke up at that time yeah you know and, yeah. and I can completely relate to yourself yeah. and a lot of your story yeah, you know. Yeah, no, I mean, and again, you know, I, I can, I can completely identify with that as well. You know that 
there is a certain sort of, um, I suppose, stability or security when you're, you know, because you, you, you've only got yourself behind mm. the door, you know, and, and, you know, you've no responsibility as such because, you, well, you can't, mm. you know, because, you know, you can't, there's not a whole lot you can do even if you wanted to. Mm. Um, don't get me wrong, I wouldn't swap it today, mm. uh, you know, but, but I completely identify with, with, with that mm. to me, you know. Um, and, um, but yeah, you know, as a result of, you know, I suppose just to, as a result of the drug free, um, status then that I yeah. had, I was able to, um, they gave me the, the training unit, um, Mount Joy. in Mount Joy, which, which, which meant, you know, you, you, you aren't locked up till nine o'clock at night. Um, a lot more freedom, really, you know, um, you know, you were out all day. You, you know, there were other courses, you know, in computers and things like that that I took. Um, and, um, and then eventually I, I, I was, I was given a, a day release program, you know. Um, I, the one thing that always strikes me, <laughs> I never forget about going in there, actually. Um, I don't know if you've experienced this, but it was going from the, the utensils, from the food, <laughs> the plastic <laughs> utensils yeah. from the main prison environment. And when you go in to the to the semi open or the the less I suppose the more relaxed environment, they let you have the steel fork and knife again. Mm. I couldn't get used to it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I was about two weeks. I I couldn't. I, do you know what I, mean? I, yeah. I found myself picking up the food and everything. I couldn't get used to the steel in my yeah. mouth. You know, mm. and uh, things like that. You it's know, it's a big it, change, isn't it? For going from the, you know main prison. You can you yeah. you you went to Chelsea Abbey. Yeah. But I, I'll tell you a quick story about my own transfer from the Midlands down to Shelton Abbey, mm. and um, I was inside in the the sweat box with another, sweat boxes, the prison van with another guy, mm. and they were bringing us on down to Shelton Abbey. I thought we were going to Shelton Abbey, two of us. Mm. Next, we pull up outside Dundrum, the mental, the, the, the state mental institution, and I said, God, there must be something wrong with me here. <laughs> I thought they were pretending to be sending me on to a fucking open prison to get me down to Dundrum because I was mad. Yeah, yeah. That's how fucking mad I was. Like, <laughs> I know what was going on. Yeah. I was sitting in the back of the bus, I said, the bastards were after tricking me into this place. <laughs> <laughs> there was another fella there. I said, I don't, and go, oh, what a fucking relief when I, when we were driving back out that gate. I got to Shelton Abbey, I said, there's wish. <laughs> my clothes were ringing because yeah. I actually literally thought of course, I would yeah. have to lose my mind because I was yeah. so mad at the time, even I though I, I was recovering I know. from I know. trauma and, I know. and all the stuff in my life. But fucking hell. That's right. Going into the, yeah. the open prison and walking around the gardens of Shelton Abbey, which are absolutely divine. Yeah, yeah. It was an amazing experience. Yeah. I remember yeah. um, when, when my dad went from Cork to the training unit yeah. to, uh, as a child, experiencing that, mm. at least in the training unit, like you had contact That's visits. Right. That's right. You were in a room, there's no officers looking at you. It was way more humane, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Uh, definitely, yeah. Um, no dogs. Yeah. No. 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 no, no. The yeah. officers don't wear uniform. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. All in the you know civ civ we, civilian clothing. Like what age were you when you went in to prison? First I was day? I was twenty eight. Mm. And what age were you when you were getting out? I was. I suppose I got 34. out. I, I was thirty four. Yeah, I was thirty four. Yeah. Um, I was. I I'm trying to remember. No, I think it was July thirty. Yeah, t yeah, in July in two thousand and six. Was was when I was released from from the circuit court in Cork, you know, mm. and um, what was life like when you got out? Very very difficult, James. Mm. Very difficult. It is, by I I I learned how to I learned how to cope in a in a in a in a clean um, way, but I learned that inside, and I know I had to learn it outside, yeah. you know, and. It, it was really, really difficult, you know. I was, I was terrified. I was absolutely terrified, you know. Again, for 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 family and friends, you know, who you know who want the best for you, you know. I was being invited out. I should have a point, and oh, should yeah. we haven't seen you like and this and that, you know. And yeah. um, and and then of course, you know, I just. I found myself then getting frustrated with people, you know, and um, and for the most part, really, like the only word I could put on it, like, was I was just terrified. Yeah. I, I was terrified to go into a pub. I didn't want to socialize, you know, because 
I said to myself, oh, I didn't have to say it to myself. I knew, I knew because of where I'd been, how it changed me as a person, you know, for the good in, in the sense that I had been clean and had gained an awareness that I never had. But also that experience scars you in a way mm. that I, for, for, for me, you'll never lose it, you know, in, 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 in just, just by virtue of the experience, you know. You mentioned it, being being behind the door, being locked up for eighteen hours a day, is not natural, you know. No. And just just if if you've never seen anything take place in prison, if you never had an encounter in any kind of violent way, and um, which unfortunately I did, but if you had never experienced anything like that in prison, by the, by the very virtue of, you know what it's, you know, mm. developed to do. Well, when you think you know? about it, like you're told where to eat, when to eat, you're given the food, yeah. like, uh, three times a day. That's right. So now all of a sudden, you have free choice. Yeah. I'm like, what do you do with all that choice? Like, oh, That's right. When do I eat? Who's all opening the door for me? Do I buy the food? I cook it myself. Do you That's know? right. These are the things like that you have to experience. You know, for six years is not a small amount of time. No. You know, you've developed so much as a human. You've learned all these coping skills to deal with your emotions mm -hmm. and stuff. That's but right. No coping skills for actually living in the real world. Exactly. Yeah. And and that's it. That's you nailed it there, James, you know. Um but look, what I did was, you know, I I, I um I continued with, with with treatment. Um or it wasn't treatment, but it was like um like an aftercare program and, and then I, I you know, I did the whole fellowship thing and, yeah. and 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 met some great people like, you know, who were very, very helpful, you know. Um you know, we spoke there earlier on. We mentioned Sheila, mm. Sheila Connolly from our the very, Our line. very first guest, you know, and instrumental in all our lives at the table. Do you know, if you don't mind, like, I'd love to give Sheila a shout, like, no, you know, because exactly. um, yeah. Sheila was just amazing. And yeah. the Cork Alliance Centre mm. is, a, is a fantastic resource, like, yeah. for, for people, you know, yeah, yeah. Who, who've come from where we've come from, you know. And um, so, you know, thanks to Sheila and the staff yeah. there, like, you know. I'm here uh, doing a bit of filming with myself and Timmy tomorrow. Okay. And as part of it, we're going to go in with Sheila and okay. do a bit of filming there. Yeah. But like we did, in the, we did a hundred podcasts there last week in the Lord Mayor's Chamber with Dan O'Leary from the Life Centre yeah. and Katrina Tomey, Penny Dinners. But the work Sheila does is is equally important. Absolutely. But it doesn't get half the acknowledgement That's because right. it's for prisoners. That's right. But prisoners are just people like us. That's right. Just regular people that happen to end up in prison. That's right. Not like... Fred West That's and right. Charles Manson, just regular people. Just regular people. From, you know, working class areas. Exactly that. that yeah. They're not yeah. in prison. Exactly and they deserve that. all the charity and the second chances as well. Well, you know? well, they do, well, they do, James, you see, and that's just it, like, you know, um, and, and you know, I suppose as I, as I continued, like, in, in recovery, um, you know, giving back became a very important thing to me. Giving back, like, you know, and, and you know, so, you know, I trained and, and as I said, I went up to UCC and I interviewed in UCC and I was accepted onto their, um, it was a part-time diploma I did up there in, in community-based guidance. And um, and then I went on after that and I interviewed with Arbor House Treatment Services for their addiction counselling programme. Yeah. And I trained in that and I was awarded their diploma. And um, and I, work, I got a job then. I, I got a job actually um, above in... Um, above in Farnry in a, in a, in a young person's project. Um, adolescence became my interest because of, I suppose, the life cycle that I became aware of and how vulnerable mm. that life cycle is, you know, and I wanted to, I wanted to work in that area, you know, and um, I got a job and I was up there like for almost five years mm. and, and the project, the funding was cut during the, during the, the economic crash, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um so that kind of ended my time in 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 that environment. Um, did you enjoy the work? I loved it. Yeah, I did. I loved it. I got very involved. It was it was a program called the Strengthening Families Program. That's right. Yeah, I done it. Um, fantastic program, Timmy. You know. Yeah. Um, I was I was involved in that, and then I set up parents groups as well, um, where I facilitate um, mothers say like on a Tuesday evening and fathers on a on a on a Thursday yeah. evening, and um. And to be fair, like it was a tier two project, meaning you never really see the fruit of your labor. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's sort of doorstep stuff. Mm. You know, you have young people coming into you, like, you know, and I mean, you know, the, the, their lives are chaotic, you know, yeah. for one reason or another. And, uh, you know, one story, if I just share this quick, quickly yeah. before we get into the, 
today, my, my conversion was I got married, um, in, in, um, I better get this right. I just thought about it. <laughs> choose, <laughs> your ne- choose your next words <laughs> carefully. <laughs> get this right now, you know, um, in 2012 and, um, you know, to, uh, to Lisa, beautiful wife that I have, you know, and, uh, so we got married and our reception was above in the Montanari Hotel. And you know, a year later, they give you, they invite you back and they give you a free night. That's right. Yeah. You know, if you, if you have the wedding with them and this and that, and, um, we were there. So we came back, we, we, we had moved to the UK and we came back for our, our, our free night and our breakfast and that. Oh. And we were there and we, you know, we were relaxing at the breakfast the following morning anyway. And, uh, um, there was a girl, you know, waitress and she was just coming and going, coming and going, you know, and chatting away and, and, and she stopped and she said to me, um, Mark, you don't know me at all. And I thought, I thought it was one of my daughter's friends or something, you know, I said, I'm sorry, I said, I don't, I, don't. I said, I recognise you, all right, you know. She said, um, you helped me and my mum, she said, she said, when, when we thought like that life was over for both of us, you helped us, you know. And even no saying it like I get mm. yeah. because yeah. like that's, that's why you got into the job in the first place is to have that type you know of what impact, I mean? isn't it? But like when you're in a job so long, you don't see the fruit of your labour. You're fire fighting, you aren't you? Can't see it straight away. No, yeah. you can't but, see but, it straight away. You know, a few years on, mm. you know, and and to hear something like that, mm. you could have knocked me over with a feather, like yeah, no. you know, like I, amazing you know, feeling. I, incre- I mean, it it just. Yeah. Because, like, let's face it, the job doesn't pay that well. You know, it's not a yeah. great paying job or anything yeah. like that. You know what I mean? But when you, I tell you, when you hear that from a young person, like, and she said, I'm in college now. And the more she was telling me, the more I was welling up, you know. And, and, and the, the more, the more self work you have on yourself. You know, Tim. It's amazing. You, like, you couldn't, there's no money with, huh. no money would match it, you know. We and, get it all. You know, know. We get but, it from emails and messages yeah. you know, from people. Exactly. But I remember when I was starting out my recovery and when I met with Gillian, my wife, and uh, the relationship she had with Sheila. And then I started linking back in with the Cork Alliance in early recovery. Yeah. And uh, I could see like, the relationship people had with Sheila and other staff and mm. in this and and the job satisfaction they used to get from people that are coming in the door and rag order and progressing with their lives and yeah. going through courses and colleges and getting married and all these things. It's like that's why we get into the job. It's not a great paying job. That's right. But the satisfaction you get from it you wouldn't get anywhere else. No. Absolutely you know, meaningful impact on people, real people. Yeah. You're not making a millionaire CEO richer. That's right. You're actually helping a person. Exactly. Uh, and and our family and, and that's why we do what we do. Exactly, James. Exactly that way, you know. And um and I'm blessed, you know, to well like I mean I, I you know, I later went into construction or back to construction, as it were. After um, the recession. Yeah. Or because yeah, of the recession. Yeah, yeah. Um I we moved to the UK because things were very bad here, you know, in two thousand eight, two thousand nine mm. and um I went back into construction and um I trained in, in sort of site management and now I work as a a, a building inspector for a, a housing trust in London, you know, um, and, um, great job. Don't get me wrong. You know, um, I enjoy, I, all, I enjoy all aspects of construction, you know, and I still go on the tools myself, like, yeah. you know, um, a couple of days a week as well. Um, and I, I love it. I enjoy it. And, um, but it's not Cork. Mm. It's not home. Mm. Would you like to be back home? Oh, we'd love it. Yeah. We, I mean, what's stopping you from coming home now? There's a number of things, I suppose, Tim, but th- th- the biggest thing really is the accommodation. Yeah. Yeah, they, that's, it's very difficult mm-hmm. when you're living in a different country to try and secure accommodation when there is already accommodation in, in accommodation crisis. Yeah. yeah, it's very difficult. It's very. I mean, we 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 were playing there. I don't know. I lost count, and we hardly received any replies. Like, you know, there's anyone out there with something offside in the country, anything like that, a door up or ratting, and uh, I'd say you're handy with your hands. Absolutely. You're definitely looking f- looking to come back to Cork in Ireland, aren't you? That's right. They yeah. can contact us here and they Yeah. Uh, anybody uh, knows anybody yeah. or has something. You know what I mean? Thanks, so, lads. You know, yeah. No, great. Yeah, by exactly. all means, absolutely. You'd be yeah. very, very, very surprised. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, they can contact you through us and we can link you together. So absolutely. He's got something to come out of that. Well, this is it. And it's not from the one to praying about it, you know? Yeah. Um, Speaking of praying. Yeah. How did you end up getting involved? How did you become a born again Christian? What was the right. process of who kind of showed you that path? Yeah. 
that. Well, what happened? Um, I had a nephew, um, or I have a nephew, um, a shout out to him if you don't mind, Frank. Oh, yeah, like Frank. My nephew Frank, oh, Frank. Hello, Frank. He, he lives in Canada, um, and he was he was here. He was actually he had moved to Canada, and he was back visiting his parents, my brother, um, my sister in law, and he was saying to me, "Look, would you just come to church with me?" And I was saying, "Look, I'm flying." I'm grand. I'm, I'm in recovery. Like thinking to myself, like church. You know what I mean? I, what's, that, what's that about? Like, you know, that is mad. Do you know? I was thinking, like yeah. you know. I mean, yeah. Well, like I mean, I, I said to myself, like <laughs> you know, I mean, here's a guy who never did anything wrong in his life. Yeah. As a matter of fact, he did everything right. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I said, like, sure, what's that place going to have for someone like me? Do you know? Yeah. I mean, that's for people like him. Yeah. yeah. Do you know that type? That was that was just the sort of mentality they grown. Yeah, that was just you know a, a quick glimpse, you know, and uh, and he said to me one day, "We never asked you for anything," and I visited you when you were in Dublin. I said you did. I'm asking you now. He said one thing: come to church with me. And I couldn't refuse him. You know, he had me like. Yeah, no, I couldn't refuse. Definitely refute. had I, you there, yeah, honey. He had me. Yeah, I know, I know where to go, like you know. <laughs> So I said, right, go on, go on. I said, pick me up whatever time, you know. And the church I went to was um, a church called Grace Christian Fellowship. They're set up down on McCartan Street now, but at the time they were out in Deer Park School in the gym on a Sunday morning and the nephew picked me up and I went out and this gym hall full of people, like, you know, and, and I sat down and, and um, the pastor there, uh, Tom Burke, he says, um, you know, he, he started a sermon, welcome people in and big emphasis on worship, musical worship, which is something that I hadn't experienced before. And mm. it, that was of interest to me, you know, so I'm looking at this and definitely different. Mm. And um, he opened the Bible and I had had a dream while I was in prison a few years previous to that. And I was on a beach. I remember it vividly. This is. 20 years ago, no, 25 years ago nearly. And I remember it vividly to this day. And I was on a beach in the dream and there was a swarm of locusts coming in off the horizon and I could see them coming. And I had my hands up blocking my face because they were coming at me in their millions. like, And they were, I could feel them physically hitting the backs of my hands. And I just heard a voice in the dream saying, no, turn your back. And I turned my back and they went out around me and back off into the horizon out to sea, right? Vivid dream. What was that about? God knows. I'm sitting out in this church. Pastor opens the Bible. He said, yeah, I believe I have a word for someone here today. He said, it's from the prophet Joel in chapter two. I'm listening. I'm just sitting there like, and he says, the Lord says that he's going to repair the years the locusts have eaten in your life. I nearly fell off the chair. Fuck. I nearly fell off the chair. For the first time in my life, for the rest of that day and week, I think, I was, I was silenced. I was quiet. I didn't know what was going on. But I was there was a quietness came over my whole being, like internally. And I found my nephew had gone back to Canada midweek and I went out there on my own the following Sunday. And the following Sunday. And I was baptized six months later. And I was trying to think, how am I going to explain this to the boys now on the podcast, you know? Mm -hmm. What you're, happened? You're doing a great job at it. You know? You know even when you when you talk you're about it. You know, even when you talk about it, you just go so present, so calm. Mm. Yeah. There's no like you back to the moment. It's unbelievable. Like I could just see like there's no like you're not thinking about anything, I, you're just reliving it and it's just peace, isn't it? It it you know, James, I was you know, I was trying to think. And what actually happened on that day in that moment was the only truth I ever heard in my life was confirmed. The truth was confirmed. 
And what I mean by that is, throughout the Bible, because I've become a student of the Bible now, and, you know, you mentioned to me, you're a born again Christian, you know, what's that? Mm. You know, and I'm very, very conscious of, it's not the Mark Payton opinion here. It's what, what the biblical scripture and truth says, not what I say. Mm. I will never say the Bible, you know, I, I think this or I think that. You know, I have guys coming up to me all the time and say, well, how do you know you're right? What about the Muslims? What about the Buddhists? What about, you know, what about them? And I'd say, exactly. So let's go to the authority. Because I'm not saying I'm right. No more than you're saying you're right. Or he's saying he's right. But what I'm saying is let's look at the authoritative word. Because the Bible declares it is the authoritative word. God breed word, mm. you know, and 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 you know when I when I when I talk about biblical truth, you know, you know I think about the person and the man of Christ of Jesus Christ, you know, and um, how he declared that he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life, you know, he's the only way to salvation. You know, the, the the Apostle Peter writes about it in, 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 in the book of Acts, that there is no other name given under heaven or on earth by which we must be saved. You know, talking about Jesus, like, you know, and, um, and, 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 you know, there, there are so many passages about, about truth and, 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 you know, when I when I looked at that, then I was like, "Well, what does that mean?" You know, so you know, I had a look at it. What is what is the truth he's talking about? You know, and the truth he's talking about, which I discovered when I started doing a bit of research, was he is the truth as lived out by the prophets. And what I'm talking about there is, I started looking at the Old Testament, and then I came across passages like. For example, in, 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 in the book of Isaiah, the prophet. And he was writing things like in, in, in chapter 53 where he says, You were wounded for our iniquities and you were pierced for our transgressions. And on you the chastisement of the world has been put and by your wounds we are healed. And then I discovered he's talking about Jesus. But Jesus wasn't born for another seven, eight hundred years. Mm. So then I sat back when I started reading that stuff. And then I discovered that there was over 300 prophecies in the Old Testament talking about, literally talking about the life, ministry and death of Christ up to anything from, from 1500 to... Um, Mike, I think, was the last prophet of the Old Testament 400 years before he was born, like. So now I had evidence, as well as this, mm. this... It makes sense. Everything made sense then to you, like, like... All the questions that you would have questioned stopped because you were after all these prophets had said exactly Jesus, how Jesus was going to live his life. Absolutely. Do, yeah? Absolutely, but they were... They were, you know, prophesying about the Messiah. They were prophesying. I mean, in the very, very first book of Genesis, I think in, 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 in I think it's in the third chapter, you know, the formation of the world as we know it today. You know, when, 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 you know, in the beginning, God created heavens and the earth. Mm. Uh, you know, and, and because of the original sin, right? Where, where the, the, the story as it goes is, is where, Adam and Eve were disobedient to God in the ear of the apple, yeah. you know, and 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 God, when He was going through the discipline, you know, that was going to be doled out for, as a result of disobedience, He said, like you know, as a result, man will have to work with his hands for the rest of his for the rest of time, like you know, you know, that women would would experience pain in childbearing, and He said to Satan. 
because of what you've done. Her son will bruise his heel on your head. He's talking about Christ. Mm. That he would have to be the only sacrifice for the sin of the world. Mm. I was in a couple of uh, Christian-based treatments down through the years, okay. you know. And uh, there was a two, there's two bits of it, bits of the Bible, chapters of the Bible or sayings or mm-hmm. what's the part, what's the term? Is James a gospel? It is, yeah. So the gospel of James. So yeah, the book, the book of James, I yeah. used to be very sharp with my tongue, you know. Okay. I had an answer for everything. I know where and you're he going. says, James, read James. He says, the tame and the tongue. That's right. And he says, do you know what he says going forward? He says, instead of being always smart with your response, think about what you're, think about what you're saying and how your your request to be always the smart addict and how, how your life is working out for you because of it. Yeah. And that was always something that stayed with me. And the other one then was uh, Proverbs 3.5. Yeah. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean that in your own understanding. Jeez, yeah. you have some memory, James. And how I, because, of the, because yeah. no way, because it meant something to me. Yeah. And how I interpreted that was like, stop trying to put your will into everything, James, and just trust that if you're a good person, things will work out for you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And and stop putting your and you know what that took a lot of pressure off me in recovery. Yeah. yeah. It's like just trust that there's an intelligence out there that'll help you. And and you know, James, that's 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 profound, really. Because you know, for 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 life, like in recovery, <clears throat> like you mentioned there, Proverbs three, you know, and and James um chapter one, there's life and death in the tongue. You know, you say something, you can't take it back, you know. Um and, 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 you know, we're also advised, like the Bible teaches, like to, to guard your heart. That's a very, very, very powerful sentence, isn't it? You know, guard your heart. Yeah, yeah. Because, because, you know, the, the King Solomon in, in his Proverbs, he says, guard your heart for out of your heart is the wellspring of life, you know. Mm. And, and when I kind of looked into that a little bit further, like I discovered, like, it's one thing guarding your heart. But you must also guard other people's hearts. Mm. You must also be conscious of what you're saying and how how what we say might affect other people. Mm. You know, because the, because of the again the taming of the tongue, there's life and death in the tongue. Mm. Yeah. James says he was a half brother of Jesus actually, and that's what he says. There's that's life and death in the tongue. You know, so life be, and death in the tongue. Yeah, be careful of what yeah. you say to people. We you spoke know? with uh, Yvonne in the last podcast we did, and we mm. were talking about another you know, inner dialogue and mm. how like. The things we say to ourselves, mm. we wouldn't dream of saying that to anybody else. How critical we can be, That's right? Do you know, but like that constant negative talk, it it, it manifests itself in your life circumstances. Do you know what I, I mean? Have yeah. you still got that inner dialogue, that negative inner dialogue that you would have had, say, before you became a born again Christian, Mark, and you really went down the the road of understanding Christianity and love mm. and and doing right by your fellow man and woman. Mm. Mm. Do you still have that, or do you understand it a little bit more in depth than what you would have before? I, I, I do, Tim. I, I, I do on both counts, actually, because conversion is a gradual. It was very gradual for me, very gradual. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not a fella that goes easy, like, mm. and it took me a long time to surrender to the love of Christ. You know, it took me a long time. You know, and 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 you know the th- the thing is. Yes, the the inner you know, dialogue. It still happens. It's still there, you know. I mean, I'm I'm still a human being, mm. you know. The the conversion process is 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 a lifetime is a lifetime gig. Like I mean, mm. we're 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 being transformed into the image of Christ, you know, as a born again believer, you know that that, you know, another analogy would be you're in the Potter's hands and he'll mould you. You know, as you go in your life. I like that one. You know, he'll mold you into the person that he wants you to be as you go. Mm. It's not an event. You know, it's not an event. It doesn't happen overnight. But, but what, what, what the mainstay is and what is consistent is that the deeper you develop your relationship with Christ, and that can be done just by the daily reading of the Bible or, or, or visiting a church and, and, and listening to the gospel, you know, things like that. That's how you develop your, your relationship with Christ and the consistency that's unwavering, right? 
and 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 this is what really attracted me to 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 the faith really and to and to be a follower of Christ is is um is the love of Christ the love of Christ it's unwavering unbreakable everlasting everlasting it never ever ends mm. this life or the next you know it never ever ends and and then I became interested in the person, in the man, in, in Jesus Christ. And, you know, he was, you know, because the, the, the lawmakers and traditionalists of the day were constantly questioning him, um, trying to, you know, trying to strip him up and catch him out. And, and they were saying to him, if my brother does something against me, how many times do you want me to forgive him? Seven times? Ten times? Twenty times? You'll forgive him, he said, no matter how many times. You forgive him, mm. no matter how many times he does something against you, you forgive him. Because he said, on the last day, you would want forgiveness, won't you? Yeah. So remember that. Does your, does, does your wife, um, is she a born again Christian? She is, or? she is, yeah. yeah. They said converted as well. Um, they said converted around um, about 2010 that way. Did she find it a bit difficult at the beginning or did, um, did did she see the change in you and say, you know what, Mark has so much peace in his life at the moment. Attracted into and I'm really going to, I'm going to start going to uh, church and listen and... Even listening to that, I'm thinking like, I'm sure I have a Bible at home, I'm going to have a look at it today. Yeah, well, that's, I'll, but that's, I'll give you one. Uh, you know, I mean, the thing, look, you know, the... I mean, it's a personal relationship. Yeah, like yeah. people, I get it all the time. Like, what's the difference between what's the difference between a Catholic and a Christian? And you know, I get, I get all these questions. And Do people try to take the piss as well. Ah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, but that's that's life. That this is your belief, and this is this is your thing. One hundred percent. But like, I mean, again, I would actually love to have that. Yeah, and and I don't. I, I'm not being smart in no. any way, but I can see how passionate and how much peace yeah. you have in your life and, and yeah. most people would love to have that yeah. much faith in Christ but a lot of people are still they still have that real real thick mm. armour over the heart that's right and, and it needs to be worn down and broke a little bit more that's right. before they and, and you only you said it well ago it took you a long long time to surrender absolutely and it's surrender absolutely and that, that acceptance they're key they're key to having what you have I mean, Timmy, and that's it, you know, I mean, right again, like, you know, it's, 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 you know, it is a process, like, you know, but, you know, like, like, again, Solomon, the king wrote in, in, in his, I suppose, his memoir, really, in Ecclesiastes, like, that God placed eternity in the hearts of men, he mm -hmm. said, you know, and, 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 and what he talks about throughout that chapter, I think it's chapter three, it's a very good read, actually. He's talking about men never being satisfied. Like, you know, another passage says two things that are never, never satisfied, like in the world, the eyes of man and the grave, you know, and, you know, God placed eternity in the hearts of men so that we know, that makes sense to me. we know, we know, so that we know that there is, we're, we're, we're not home here, you know, mm -hmm. we're not home. Eternity is our home. You know, and that's why man is restless. That's why man wants to dominate his fellow man. This is why we have war in in the world and what all that's going on at the moment. This is why guys aren't satisfied. They want more. They want a nicer car, a nicer house, a nicer pair of shoes, you know, and all of that. We're running away from the stillness. You know? We're running away from the calmness, the love. You know? Because we can't sit like you were when you were younger. 100%. Like I was when I was. You know, I can still be like that on any given day. You know, I'm never not perfect. And nobody, sure. all, me and James always like clarify that. We don't have a don't do tea. We're not perfect. We still have our fucking struggles like everybody else. And me you never, you never you get know? a certificate to say no. you're cured. Go on about your day. Uh, Enjoy ab your abso <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. still working on it. Abs yeah. Absolutely. And I'm, and I'm glad you said that because, as I said, you know, conversion, you know. And, and look, I get it. Convert, like it's not for everybody I get that you know and, and people you know and I respect people's opinions and I respect how people want to live absolutely you know but you know I mean the thing about it is like you know you know yes I have a whole lot of more peace than what I ever had in my life right 
Um, but but am I without my flaws? I mean, do I have bad days? You know, absolutely. Mm. Do I say things I wish I hadn't? Absolutely. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Of course, I do. you know, I'm a human being. like Exactly. You know, and um, but but are they less than what they used to be? Absolutely. Mm. You know, am I a better guy than what I used to be? 100%. Yeah. You know, and 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 I'll take that. I'll take that. You know, I my, my eldest sister, like, who, you know, who I love dearly, like, you know, um, she gave me a birthday card there, like, you know, and, uh, do you know, she said to me, like, on, on the birthday card, like, I'm so proud of the man you've become, like. And, That's nice, isn't it? That's and, amazing. Like, for me to hear that from her, mm. like, you know, do you know, because she really, you know, she really tried with me, like, you know, her, yeah. my whole life. And, um. What's your sister's name? Her name is Sheila. Hi, Sheila. Yeah. Hi, Hi Sheila. Sheila. You know, she's a great woman, like, you know, and, uh, for yeah. to, to be able to say something like that consciously, like, you can understand how she is a great woman. Absolutely. She's, she has her own in-depth kind of God as well. You can see she has it. Yeah. You know, and, um, so I'll take that, you know, I'll take that any day, like, you know. Brilliant. And and, so, uh, listen, it's a great way to close up the podcast mm-hmm. on a lovely positive note like that. And happy 50th birthday. Happy 50th birthday. Thanks very much. You'll be 50 in six weeks when this goes out, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. But we're recording a few in advance, so we can take a few months yeah. off in the yeah, summer. Yeah, but, uh, good, yeah, good. Yeah. A few months, but uh, yeah. it was a pleasure talking to you. We got through yeah. so much there. Yeah. yeah. And I hope you're happy. We did really well. Yeah. You know, and you're a great advertisement for recovery and, you know, to show the pathway for people that's in prison at the moment yeah. and they're struggling. And you found something that's after helping you mm. and it's through the church, it's through Christ, as you said. Yeah. And that's an option for people. Absolutely. And other people might like it, but other people will. That's right. And it's there if you want it. Go and try it. What's the worst that can happen? Absolutely. And if I could, if I could just finish, James yeah. and Timmy, and just to say thanks so much, you know, it's a real privilege. I feel privileged to be here, you know, because of, I, you know, I'm a big fan of the podcast and I watch it all the time from, from home in the UK, like, you know, and, um, you know, I can't reinforce enough, you know, what what this is doing for people and, and and you know, lifting the stigma and, and, and you know, for, for past mistakes and giving people opportunities, you know, to, like myself, like to, 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 I suppose, present the full picture, like, you know, as it is. And, um, and, and the promotion of education and the promotion of healthy lifestyles and, and you two guys, you know, in your in your own right, like the inspiration that you are to me, and I've no doubt counts, countless others, like you know, and that and my prayer is that you know that that will continue here in Cork, like you know, for guys you know that are you know maybe not so lucky at the moment, you know, and and um and th- and thanks. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this chat with you, and um, you're an amazing guy, but and just keep doing what you're doing. You know, and um, hopefully you'll find a home here in Cork very soon. Yeah, you know. God. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. God bless everyone. See everybody next week. God bless. <laughs>